Well, folks, in my last video, we started running all of my HO scale steam locomotives. However, due to the length of that video, I wasn't able to run them all. So in this video, we're going to continue running all of the engines which I didn't run in my last video, and we'll see how they all go. Anyway, without further ado, I hope you enjoy us running the last of the steam engines which I didn't run. Anyway, let's get started. So there's that, and uh, next up we've got uh, Camelback Steam Locomotive. I bought this one at a train show years ago, I think it was like 2011 or something like that, maybe 2012, I don't know. It was one of the last years uh, there were train shows in uh, the city of Ottawa, and uh, in any case, I'm pretty sure this was probably one that uh, was uh, in a train set at some point. A uh, brand uh, called President's Choice here, uh, which is a big uh, grocery store chain. Uh, they actually contracted Mahano to make their train sets, and every year uh, Mahano would uh, include a different type of locomotive. So for one year they uh, included this. So uh, they're quite uh, they're quite common uh, these days. And uh, it's an old Mahano, and uh, as I said before, quite a big fan of these. This one uh, runs pretty well, and uh, yeah, it's sort of a unique engine, you know, Camelback. Something a little bit uh, more unusual there. Next up is a pretty much identical engine, just with a bit of a different paint scheme and with a different uh, railroad on it there. Uh, this was another one uh, sent in by uh, Ant and Bruce. And uh, if we get it set up on the track, as I believe it ran, uh, I think it ran exactly like the other one I just had set up there. So anyway, if we give it some power. Yep, pretty much an identical runner. And it's another Camelback, so yeah. Really interesting little locos, or I guess medium locos, I should say. Next up, I got one, uh, I don't think I've even really showed this one too much on the channel. I got this thing somewhere around 2009. Uh, it's an Athern Genesis, possibly. I'm pretty sure it's Genesis. Um, this thing's never ran perfectly. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't sound quite right to me. I find the motor uh, doesn't maintain a consistent... Uh, RPM there. I did try to check it, but uh, this is not the type of engine you can really just crack open and start messing around with. Every single wheel is uh, spring-loaded, so when I took that off, uh, it all sort of came apart, and I had to spend uh, about an hour putting it all back together again. So, uh, yeah, it's really not uh, a repairman's dream there, but in any case, it uh, does run. You can see, I don't know what it is. It just doesn't seem like it operates perfectly smooth. I mean, you can even hear right now, the motor is definitely revving higher than it, uh, than the wheels are turning there. So I have no idea what's going on with it, but uh, something's definitely off with it. So yeah. Anyway, I don't know if that was something I did to it as a kid, but in any case, it's, uh, it's not, it's not perfect, which is too bad because it's a really good looking engine. This uh, next one, uh, is a little bit special. This is actually a really cool engine uh, because it's an old Varney, and Varney, uh, actually, they put a seven-pole super motor in this one, uh, which is really unique. I don't know if I own any other engines that have a motor quite like it. Uh, it's a great puller because, uh, yeah, it's got that seven-pole high-torque motor. Uh, it's also, it weighs a ton, and so does its tender there. Uh, and this is something I've been adding on to, so we got this tender for it there, and somebody sent me a boiler cap. I think I got a headlight for it, and uh, it will be about perfect. I could make this look a lot better, but I don't know. I kind of look how, like how it has a bit of like a rustic look to it there, <laughs> and uh, and still goes. And uh, if we give it some power, you can see it's uh, it's not flawless, but it does go. I don't know. I would love to uh, work on this one a bit more, get the current draw down, and put a decoder in it, because it would just be so funny to have something like this going around at the train club. You can only imagine what uh, people uh, at a train show would think of something like that. This one uh, right here is sort of interesting. I actually uh, assembled this locomotive myself. I think it was a roundhouse kit or uh, something like that. Uh, and it runs okay. These kits are supposed to be uh, put together quite carefully, and I, uh, I did my best there, but uh, I get the impression that it's, the wheels are binding just a little bit there because it doesn't run uh, perfectly smooth, and uh, it seems to cut out at lower speeds there. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely something up with it, but... Uh, it does run nonetheless, so I guess I really can't complain much. I just uh, wish I could uh, figure out how to uh, do those last little bits of tuning, which I feel like would uh, make this into a really good runner. 
But, uh, yeah, it is what it is, kinda. Certainly a cool looking engine, I'll give it that. Cabal also has a bit of a det detaching problem there, so I'm gonna have to sort that out at some point. This one right here for a few years, I got it uh, as a birthday gift when I was turning 12 back in uh, 2013. It's uh, an old Mahano engine there, and uh, I'm quite a big fan of it. I've got to give uh, Mahano some credit because uh, this thing hit the floor pretty hard. I was uh, running it. I can't remember what happened, uh, but it, it ended up hitting the floor pretty hard, and uh, it actually pretty much uh, survived without uh, any major damage. It's missing its bell because of that, but uh, still runs like a champ, so uh, hey, I'm happy. Um, yeah, great little engine. Looks uh, really good too. I, I'm quite a big fan of this paint scheme. So yeah, there's that. Next off, we've got one. Um, I found this thing at a train show. Uh, this was interesting. The guy said that it was a quote-unquote rough runner, but I just saw it, this, you know, vintage engine like there, so I was just like, oh, well, you know what, I fixed these things up. If it can run to an extent, I'm sure I can turn this thing into a, you know, a fine runner. Um, it was in much, much worse condition than the guy had let on there. Um, I don't think he had even <laughs> ever tested it before, because uh, when I got around to this thing, uh, not only was it, you know, not running at all, um, but the motor, just getting the motor to turn over was pretty tough. I think somebody had oiled the commutator, um, but they had done so a really uh, long time ago, so it had pretty much seized the motor uh, quite badly there. Uh, so uh, yeah, getting this thing to run was not such an easy task. In any case, uh, it is a runner today to an extent. Uh, it looks like the uh, little thing for the wire uh, broke off, which is funny. I thought I was running this on a live stream not that long ago, so I'm not sure what happened to that. But if we put some power in the track and connect that wire up to one of the rails, um, you can see it does go, which uh, considering what kind of condition I found this thing in, is uh, it's not bad. It uh, definitely does run better though when the wire thing is broken. Yeah, it's always been a bit of a project. This next one, uh, the Blue Goose, is something that uh, was sent in uh, earlier this year, and uh, this had a whole variety of problems, including a seized corroded motor and uh, a few other issues there, which I managed to sort out. Um, this is definitely not a flawless runner, but I uh, was able to get it running, which is something I'm happy about. It's going to need a lot more tuning just because uh, it's still sort of rough there, but... I was really just happy to uh, get it moving again. I have no idea when the last time it was run was, but uh, yeah, it does go. It's got a bit of a funny noise to it though, so I definitely don't want to push it too much. So there we go. It's a really cool looking engine like that. You don't see a lot like this. And uh, yeah, you can see it runs. I put one of those uh, cheap eBay motors in it, and uh, I've got to say, those seem to perform pretty decently. So uh, yeah, this is uh, no exception there. So yeah, quite pleased with that. This next one I'm about to run is quite special to me. It's uh, one that I've had for uh, quite a few years now. I got it back when I was uh, six years old for Christmas of 2007, and uh, I've got to say this is a locomotive that I've always really liked. Um, first of all, it was the very first kind of large steam engine which I ever had in my collection, uh, so I remember being really impressed by uh, just kind of the sheer size of this locomotive as a kid, because uh, yeah, before that I had a, uh, a little Bachmann uh, 260, so uh, you can imagine uh, how this was uh, really quite a difference from that. And uh, yeah, overall it's just been a great engine. I, I can't even imagine how many miles I've put on this thing over the years and uh, it still runs pretty well. And uh, the thing that I'm really impressed by is that uh, a lot of the details still on it. It even still has the bell and all that other stuff, which considering what it's been through is pretty impressive, I promise you. So uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, an engine that I like quite a bit. And uh, if we give it some power and see it even still uh, runs fairly smooth, which, uh, yeah, that's something that I'm uh, really impressed by. Great engine. Give it a little bit more power, too. It's still fairly quick. It's pretty quiet, and, uh, yeah, it's even still, like, super efficient, too, which I know it's, you know, it's not, like, 50 years old, but, uh, 
you know, it's not brand new, so the fact it's still running that well is uh, something that I consider to be quite impressive. So yeah, great engine. Mahano did uh, a really nice job with these, and uh, yeah, I think this is always gonna remain one of my favorites out there. So here's another really special one. I decided to set this uh, up on the track off camera there just because I wanted to be uh, extra careful with it. It's my grandmother's 1951 Riverasi Hiawatha. Uh, it's pretty much the entire cause of this channel because I didn't know how to upload a photo to a website when I was trying to fix this thing up. And uh, yeah, it, uh, it essentially created the channel. Um, it does run, but I find every time I uh, take it out, there's some new thing that's gone uh, wrong on it. It requires a lot of attention. Um, this time I've just discovered that uh, it appears that the little screw that holds the uh, wheels for the tender has just popped out. Uh, it's right there, but uh, yeah, like I was saying, I, I find every time I take it out, something uh, needs adjusting. I'm going to give it some power just to... Uh, prove that uh, it does in fact go, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to open up the tender and uh, find the nut which holds that screw on there and uh, fix it all up. But it is a runner, which is something that's uh, really special because it was, you know, my grandmother's childhood train there, and uh, yeah, it was, you know, the entire cause of this channel. So the fact that, you know, it was an engine which I was trying to get working, and because of this channel, I essentially did get it working, well, it's just something that I uh, take uh, quite quite seriously there so yeah really really special one there I've only had this next one for a couple of years but I'm quite a fan of it uh, I bought it at my local hobby shop I suspect it was probably included in one of those train sets I mentioned earlier it is another Mahano product uh, it didn't come with an original box or anything like that either so it was likely sold in one of those train sets uh, but in any case, it's a fine engine. I, I like the detailing on it. Um, the main reason I bought it, I would say, is because of its wheel configuration. You know, it's a 2102, it's just something kind of a little bit more unusual. And I gotta say, Mahano did a pretty good job on this as well. Even when I had 18 radius curves on the, the main line here, uh, this thing could handle them. Uh, so it was really well designed. And uh, it's a fine runner. It's uh, fairly quiet there. It's pretty smooth. So uh, yeah, it's definitely something uh, I've been quite happy with. Definitely not bad for the money. So uh, I've already run the River Rossi Hiawatha, but I actually have uh, two Hiawathas. This is pretty much its uh, modern prototypical counterpart uh, from Fox Valley. Really nice looking engine there. Uh, it hasn't been flawless uh, operation wise. I found uh, the wires have uh, caused the tender to derail in the past. Uh, but overall, it's a fine engine. Uh, they definitely did a good job detailing-wise. I'd say that that's probably uh, where I'd give them most of the credit. It is a pretty, pretty nice-looking engine. Um, and uh, yeah, if we give it some power here, as you can see, it runs fine. I got this thing uh, before I got the River Aussie one running. I always wanted uh, Hiawatha there, and uh, there were points with the Hiawatha project when I was quite a bit younger and just didn't know as much about restoring stuff. I uh, kind of uh, gave up, although I found myself at the workbench pretty often. Uh, but in any case, uh, for Christmas, I think of 2013, I ended up uh, asking for uh, this thing. And uh, yeah, it's a fine model. I'm obviously way more attached to the River Aussie one, but it's cool to have a more prototypical version of the same one. Right here is... Uh, Another 2102. I bought this one uh, not too long ago, and I pretty much just bought it just because uh, I had the first one there, and I, I don't know, I just thought having two of them and, and double-heading them, like, what a, what a cool combination, you know, two 2102s. So I went out and purchased this thing, and uh, just like the other one, it's a fine engine there. Um, it was all, This one was sold in a train set, I know that, because the packaging it came with was uh, just the cutout. Uh, of the uh, train set like they physically just cut out like the plastic so uh, yep there it is fine engine this one right here is the 4449 it's uh, special because it is of course the channel icon this does not unfortunately really run all that well so uh, the wheels became unquartered and it's binding unfortunately which is really too bad i really do uh, like this engine it was a gift from uh, my grandparents uh, back in 2012 for uh, my birthday and uh, yeah uh, I've, I've got too much sentimental attachment to uh, send it off to bachman for a new one um, but yeah, it doesn't uh, it doesn't run that great. You'll see in a sec here. Sometimes it doesn't even start. I'm definitely not going to run this thing for long. 
And you can see it's completely stalled out. If we flip the direction, it might go. Yeah, so there it is running. Uh, looks like the wheels actually just came off there. But uh, yeah, I just find it, it doesn't run consistently. So it seems to have a, a bit of a binding issue and uh, takes a fair amount of current to get it moving. But uh, it is a runner nonetheless, but I don't want to test my luck with it much. So that's that. This uh, next one's a Bachman engine, um, which ironically replaced, I used to have a different uh, 4449, uh, which I wasn't as attached to. Uh, that one uh, was an 80s Bachman, and uh, Bachman actually replaced it, and they sent me this. Um, this uh, didn't have such a great history either, though. This actually uh, hit a switch uh, on uh, that layout there before I had any kind of retaining wall keeping uh, everything in, and it just fell right off the layout, and uh, it got busted up pretty bad. Um, and I don't think Bachman accepts engines that uh, individuals broke back, so uh, yeah, I've kind of just got to accept it. It does run, however, though, which is something that's uh, impressive, I guess you could say. I mean, it looks terrible, but yeah, it, it goes. Yep. And uh, now, finally, last but not least, possibly one of the most impressive engines of the entire collection, the Union Pacific Big Boy. This was quite an unexpected thing. I've been looking for a Big Boy for uh, quite a long time, but I was looking kind of just for uh, the right one, you know, in the price range I was looking for. And uh, lo and behold, David ZDG Scale just went out and found one somewhere and uh, sent it off to me, which was ridiculously generous of him. And uh, yeah, here it is. What a engine. Gotta say, it's it's I don't know, it's 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 just a ridiculously impressive engine. It's it's kind of kind of wild there. I've had to do uh, a fair amount of tuning since I got it there. It is an old River Aussie, but uh, it's a great runner uh, nonetheless, and I'm uh, very happy with it. So, yeah, fantastic engine. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed getting to uh, run all these engines. And uh, yeah, it was good getting to know uh, which ones uh, work and which ones need work. So I'll definitely uh, be working on a fair amount of these in the not so distant future. Anyway, I think I'm going to go try to put all these back on the shelf now. So uh, yeah, before I do that, thank you all so much for watching.